And Gary Smith is here with us live in studio. And Gary, you were here just recently with uh, Jam Tomorrow. Yep, yep, not too long ago with uh, with MHP and uh, Mark. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So um, I was listening to, uh, I was playing back the interview, and one of the songs that you guys played live, <clears throat> I forget which one it was, but for one thing, I love watching you play because you play it's an eight string, right? Yeah, it's an eight string guitar. It, yeah. it, so it, it's basically like you're playing. Uh, it looks like you're playing guitar. Well, it sounds like you're playing guitar and bass at the same time. And one of the songs I'm I'm listening to I'm listening to your playing, and it, it's almost like you know you're going back and forth you know between the bass notes and the, the guitar notes and and it's like um it's almost like you're having a conversation. I don't know if, if if that's how you've ever thought of it or if anyone's ever pointed that out before, but I I, I realize it's like it's like the two it's it really does sound like two instruments having a conversation, and I I was fascinated by that i like that yeah i mean that's kind of the goal ultimately you know it's kind of be like a left and a right hand of the piano so they're yeah. kind of working together but still kind of complementing each other along the way so yeah um yeah no i mean that's uh kind of the goal <laughs> uh, tell us about that track we just played emo uh emu uh oh, oh, yeah emu sorry <laughs> yeah no that's fine speaking of birds there, there's, uh, <laughs> there's nothing there's nothing emo about it i don't know why i don't know why i said that but yeah <laughs> uh it's actually funny the name came from uh Stupid. There, it's that kind of sounded like a, the old uh, weather report song, Birdland, uh, and I'm like, oh, it's a bird emu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The songs in E minor. So yeah, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, that's a song I wrote uh, probably earlier this year, uh, and me and uh, Bob and Ryan, who are playing uh, guitar and uh, drums on that track, have played it a few, bunch of times. I do it in my solo set too. Yeah, um, I play. I had a little piano for texture. I played you know bass and guitar. Bob added some guitar and then uh, last minute we added my friend brian murphy on the trumpet yeah um I, I love Bob's solo at the end oh yeah when, when that comes in that's so good <laughs> it's just such a perfect i just said yeah just shred because mine's all yeah. like jazzy and nerdy and then uh, <laughs> yeah and then i just want him to just shred and he, he does it's perfect yeah the contrast of it and the texture that it adds to the song when you can do that when you can add a, like that kind of solo into something where it 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 sounds different but it still fits mm, exactly. so perfectly you know it's it's yeah what a what a great track and uh we're going to we're going to play some others too that you sent today that everything that you sent me it, it's all different it's all you know like there's a hip hop track which i love and this Every, every everything's different are these all are these all on one album are they all available on one album yeah there's an album that you can pre-order on bandcamp it's going to be streaming on bandcamp on uh monday i'm actually at one o'clock, they're doing a. I'm doing a pre-listening party at Pembroke City Limits. Excellent. Uh, to stream it. A uh, bunch of people from the bands and a bunch of other people are coming, so it should be fun. Uh, but yeah, it's going on Bandcamp the 14th. I'm pressing vinyls, uh, t-shirts, stickers, all kinds of fun stuff. Cool. Guitar picks for all my guitar nerd friends. Uh, and then it'll be on all the other streaming services on the 28th of October. So. Okay. Okay. But yeah, it's under my name that I produce hip hop under percussive maintenance. So even though I'll there's a lot of guitar stuff and there's lots of, you know, basically 16 different other musicians of, that I regularly play with that are on there. Yeah. Um, again, three hip hop songs, some instrumental stuff, solo guitar stuff. Uh, so it's, it's really all, all over the place. Uh, yeah. Uh, DJ myth, the DJ from, uh, Manchester or from rap night, Manchester, he added some scratches to some songs. So yep. really it's, it's all, it's all over the place. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. I, I worked with DJ myth like years and years ago. Uh, uh, we were both involved in a project called, well, it was called project hybrid. Okay. And it was this hip hop group where it was like, um, there were these, these, uh, two people who were at the center of it, who were always there. Uh, Danny dragon, who was a singer and Orion, the rebel, who was a rapper Oh, cool! A and they were always there, but the other musicians would kind of improvise and it was just whoever was available. So I, if I was available, I would show up and play bass. And that's awesome. If myth was available, he would be there and the doing his that's thing. Awesome. Yeah, it was, yeah, that was a great time. Yeah. He's a great guy. I haven't talked to him in so long, but yeah, he's, he's a very, very talented. Uh, yeah. I've known him for a long time. We, uh, we started learning how to make beats, uh, on Ableton at least yeah. probably like 12 years ago from the same dude. And oh, then, no kidding. Yeah. Uh, he, just went down the turntable road and I went down the other road. But, yep. uh, yeah, I know we've, we've known each other for a while. And and tell us again about, so Pembroke city limits, what, what are you doing there exactly? Uh, so basically there's a pre listening party for my album. So I'm going to stream the whole album, uh, there at Pembroke city oh, limits okay. today at one. It's also going to be available on Bandcamp. You can listen to it stream on Bandcamp for the, and that's happening. That's happening today. At that's happening today. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah awesome. Busy day coming here, done doing that. And then, yeah. uh, I'm going up and, 
debuting one of the songs uh, at Bayside Bowl tonight. Okay. Uh, the hip hop song that's on there uh, with Ben Shore, who may be calling in at some point here. Uh, yeah. Portland rapper lives in in Philly now, but uh, okay. Yeah. Um. So that that'll be cool. Uh, yeah. It, yeah. It is a busy day. Huh? Yeah. 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 But, uh, yeah, so uh, it's again the, the album's all over the place, so I'm, I I should be all over. And again, like you know, I played with a jazz trio earlier this week, and I'm playing with a hip hop artist this week, which is you know kind of how how it works for me, which is why I'm a you know my album's all over the place in the same way. Have you always uh, throughout your your career uh, up to this point? Have you always been really diverse in terms of what kinds of music and different genres that you uh, get involved in? For the most part, I mean, I. Uh, I go down rabbit holes. So like, I know way too much about hip hop, way too much about jazz. And then like some of the other stuff, just adjacently, like some of the stuff like Maisie will suggest in Fox and Flamingos. I like, I've never heard of this band, but I like it. It's cool. It's just, I've never, you know, uh, but yeah, I'll play with any, anyone, any, anything. Like I, I have fun just playing. And especially if it's somewhat, you know, improvisatory or just like the writing process. I love like writing music and making music. Yeah. So um i mean that's that's the fun part of it you know no matter what it is i play a bad burger on thursdays we do a jam there and we just you know play zeppelin songs yeah. play like so it's again completely different I, I play you know full train the night before and then zeppelin the next day so it, it's just how my music has been and you know my my confused algorithms all <laughs> over the world <laughs> you play a lot too i was looking at your schedule on your website and you yeah. play a lot yeah, I'm trying to play as much as I can. It's yeah. you know, I'm in a few different projects and then I have my solo jazz thing, so I'm always uh I'm always doing something either at Pembroke or like Nolens or you know, there's a bunch of bunch of places I do my little solo show thing at uh Milford I do a few places. So, yeah. So. Yeah. So you, th- there are a lot of places that you you play at on kind of a regular basis, almost like a residency where you go back quite a bit. Essentially, yeah. I mean like uh Nolens and Concord Lou owns a few different other speakeasies across uh, New Hampshire. So I'll go do one there and then do one at Codex in Nashua and then do one at, you know, Crowbar in Claremont. So, yeah. Uh, and obviously then makes me appreciate Pembroke city limits being uh, five minutes from my house, a little extra, but yeah, <laughs> I'm curious too about, um, so do you always, do you play the eight string at every show or? Yeah. Yeah. So that I have a looper set that I play the eight string at. So I, uh, I'm basically laying down the guitar and the bass line and one pass through with a looper and then I just play the melody. But yeah, that's that sets all over the place too because, you know, like my influences, I do like Warren G Regulate, I'll do Creep from Radiohead and then Coltrane songs. I do Take Five from Dave Brubeck. So like it's, you know, Mamas and the Papa songs like yeah. Dan Morrison. So it's so like, so eclectic. There's no one who covers the same songs that I co- I cover. I'm sure, but yeah, um, yeah. It, and I just yeah, I kind of get a loop going. Uh, for some of the set, I'll just do like kind of solo jazz guitar songs, like do like "Fly Me to the Moon" and like jazz standards and what kind of reimagined, reharmonized jazz standards. So what what did you? I assume you started out on a six string. When, I did. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I actually started on bass long before guitar, but yeah. Oh, okay. I started on bass and then learned guitar after that. And then, uh, I only got into eight string about four years ago. Okay. Um, uh, my teacher, uh, was selling one and I always kind of wanted to delve into it and I already kind of had the bass and guitar kind of background. So it was just kind of yeah getting used to the really wide neck and putting the two together. Who is your teacher? We should give them a plug. Yeah. Oh, Dave <laughs> Newsom. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I started going to summer youth music school back in uh in ninth grade which is the unh program and uh he was started teaching me then and then i went to unh uh for a little bit and then uh yeah he's he he taught taught me great and i've been i haven't had any lessons really but we play together and like that's yeah. a that's a lesson in itself <laughs> what was it um was it challenging learning to to play an eight string or did it kind of come naturally was it just a matter of uh, kind of combining what you knew in a set already yeah, in a sense. It, it was a little of both because I already kind of played six string bass. So I already was comfortable with a low B string. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, adding the low F sharp and just kind of figuring out different like chord shapes. Like, yeah. Um, like so that I, you know, a normal a on guitar to get that low a, like you can do a still almost a bar chord and do some cool stuff. And so like, you just figure out different ways to use it and, you know, some shapes kind of transfer over some yep. sometimes you figure out new shapes that you could never do with a, a six string so it's uh, yeah it's definitely fun and it gives you it gives you some range and it 
even like I use it on flamingo shows and it throws people for a loop because they'll like hear me doing the bass and then all of a sudden I'll do a guitar solo and then go back to bass. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's uh, it's it's really a, it's a fun instrument. I'm glad I, I I delved down that rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah, no, it's fascinating. Like I said, I, I like listening to it, but it's also just I'm fascinated just watching you play. It. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm just watching your fingers, you know. Um, we should play uh, since we were talking about it. We should play that hip hop track. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, "As I Lay Dying" uh, featuring Ben Shore. Um, again, uh, this is on my album. Uh, nice song, just with some different. It's on me playing guitar. The only song I play mandolin. The song there's a little mandolin loop that started the whole song, uh, which is funny how stuff like one little thing becomes this big blossoming song that barely has anything to do with the mandolin. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, it, it's a cool song. It's kind of big and epic sounding. Is yeah. kind of what I was going for. Yeah. Yeah, I really like this a lot. Let's give this a spin. This is called "As I Lay Dying." I broke, but I'm not broken. Done breaking. Left the gun smoking. My blood runs open. Scars don't heal right. Can't get it to seal tight. Rub tokens together, hoping for luck, but the deal's light. Falling like a steel pipe, I fall hard. Through a skylight window covered in glass shards. Too much dancing with the devil left my ass charred. Into the road, asked my maker to make it end. Less painful, instead an angel. Came and sang me songs until I fell asleep. Helped me get up instead of rain clouds, there was a rainbow. So I crawled till I could walk. Now I let this guitar weep. Prescriptions seem to make us pain free, but mainly remind us that we isn't in vain. We chasing dragons that have no emotion for us. We're sober soldiers as cabbage chasing the chosen formulas. The real truth lies in this here boot. There's no fear in my eyes, absent despair and despise. Walking through pairing the lies, I bear in disguise. I taste the tears rolling down her cheeks. Kiss them away, keep love so deep. I shed no more tears. I just let this guitar weep. I didn't even want to talk over the end. It just sounded so cool. <laughs> As I lay dying, that is from uh, uh, the, the, the new. Uh, now, is it is is it under Gary Smith or is oh, it? Yeah. Uh, well, I'll give it or you're or you're calling it? Sure. Yeah. So my uh, I've already released stuff under percussive maintenance. Yeah. So that is uh, here. I have a present. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, that the name of the album is Melody Workshop. My name that i produce under is percussive maintenance so all the songs on the album are going to be under percussive maintenance you know okay uh they're going to have all the different artists you know because there's jam tomorrow on there there's fox and flamingos and i tried to get again because the album is so collaborative i tried to get collaborative with the art so my good friend christy marcella uh did that uh nice piece of art 
uh, that's featured throughout the album. And then, is this so for those watching online, I'll hold up. The, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll hold up the shirt here. Um, can't really zoom in, but uh, that's so that so she did that. Yeah, so she did that piece of art. Very that's nice. awesome. Very yeah, nice. it's, it's so so gorgeous. And then yeah. uh, Nick uh, from Cosmic Blossom, he's on a song too that I'm sure you heard. Uh, he did a piece of art. Um, a friend from California did a piece of art. So it's kind of just the album is going to have a bunch of different pieces of art all kind of blended together on the back for, uh, you know, just for something kind of, again, collaborative art wise and yeah. music wise. So no, that's a, extremely cool. And uh, yeah, thank you. This is a, uh, that's amazing. Very nice. Very nice. Um, so what's kind of the, the future trajectory in terms of, uh, are you, um, are you continuing to, to work with a lot of these artists on, I mean, obviously, this this album is just now coming out or about to come out. Yeah. But but are you because you strike me as someone you probably always have ideas and oh yeah always yeah writing yeah no I always have music uh, in the banks. I mean, I could yeah. probably do another one of these pretty quick if I you know <laughs> just got into the studio and stuff. But uh, yeah, I mean that's really more. I mean, I have some ideas kind of to get things slightly more focused. You know, that's kind of this is kind of just the like shoot it out there. This is everything I do, and then you know. I want to do a little more hip hop production. Uh, me and Ben have talked about doing a few more songs together. And yeah. uh, the song that you may have heard with Maisie, Digital Sunrise, like yep. that one, we want to do a few more little like snippets like that because those, you know, come together really quick. You know, yeah. I have having the Ableton. She just, you know, records it through the mic in, in my house. And it's, it's sim super simple in that sense. Versus, okay. Uh, and then I just go to our mix mastering wizard with the stems and uh, we just mix it in a couple hours. So it's uh, no kidding. So, yeah, that's why, like, even some of the stuff that most of the stuff is, you know, ultimately produced and made in my bedroom and, you know, bedroom studio. Uh, but, you know, I, I take the stems and let Pete, Pete do his thing because he's he's such a good dude and he knows he knows his stuff. And there's so much stuff that, like, I have an idea. And then just even when he gets the stems, he's like, why don't we do this? Why don't we do this? And it just makes such a big difference. Like, yeah, that's that's why I'm glad I do. I do this with you. Now, where is he? Because we should give him a plug. Yeah, yeah that's Pete uh, Pelican at Boards House Productions uh, oh. in Brookline. Yeah, same one. That's as, where you did Jam Tomorrow, right? Yep, Jam Tomorrow. Uh, Fox and Flamingos have recorded there. Okay. Uh, there's, yeah, a bunch of bunch of bands around the area have, uh, have recorded there. I mean, Roots of Creation are the big one that they do. Uh, but he's a sound guy for Badfish, so he's on the road doing that stuff a bunch too. So. Oh, okay. Um, he's actually, we're playing a Pumpkin Fest uh, tomorrow with Fox and Flamingos, and we get to, he gets to do our sound. So we're, we're lucky. Uh, I think it's the best we'll ever sound with him doing our sound. So, no kidding. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense. But yeah, I know. He's, he's an awesome dude. And he's super easy to work with, and like he lets me nerd out and learn stuff from him. Like I've become a better, you know, producer by just watching what he does like over his shoulder and asking him nerdy questions. Yeah. It's cool though, that you're able to, uh, to do the recording at home. You know, it's, um, I always say we live in a time we're blessed to live in a time where you have so many different options in terms mm -hmm. of how you record and, you know, different studios you can go to, or you can do it at home and, and, oh, and really come out with, with something that sounds amazing. Um, maybe we should play that, uh, track digital sunrise. That's, yeah, that's yeah. another one. So th now this track to just to be clear, this is not Fox and the Flamingos. Technically. This is not Fox and Flamingos. No, this is again, a song and uh guitar riff that ultimately, again, the guitar riff started all, uh, became a song. And then I wanted to do something with it and Maisie heard it and loved it. She's like, Oh, I can write some, something cool over this. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Then just did some rearranging, but yeah, no, this is just uh percussive maintenance, uh, featuring yeah, Maisie, you know? I didn't mean to start that already. No, <laughs> Try, trying, I'm trying to actually, oh, here we go. <laughs> trying to actually download it, and this computer's being a little slow. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Yeah, this is really cool, too. Uh, let's give this a spin. This is called Digital Sunrise. <laughs> Time passes me by 
it's got a cool vibe. If you're just joining us, Gary Smith is here with us live in studio, and we're playing some tracks from uh, Percussive Maintenance. Did I get the title right? Yeah, Percussive Maintenance. That's my the producer name. Uh, the yeah. album is called Melody Workshop. Melody Workshop. Right, right. Gotcha. Which is my uh, my parents had a music store that they opened. Uh, that was my first job back oh. in ninth grade. I was giving guitar lessons and oh, bass no kidding. lessons. So yeah, that was called the Melody Workshop. So I'm like, oh, it's a perfect kind of tie everything together so yeah you were already giving guitar lessons in ninth grade yeah yeah wow. mainly bass lessons but beginner guitar lessons Damn. and then yeah by the end by like senior year that was you know just all i was doing was giving guitar lessons and bass lessons so i didn't really yeah. have a normal high school crappy job I yeah was, you know giving <laughs> lessons for my parents oh so, good uh, good for yeah, you yeah, good definitely. for you does that store still exist or no no they've both passed since uh and they retired uh, a while ago but uh yeah I think the last time it existed, probably as it was, was like 2002, 2003. Oh, okay. Uh, but I actually, I found an old picture of the sign, and that's used on the album cover. Oh, no kidding. Stuff. So, yeah. Oh, it, that's very cool. Uh, but, yeah, it was, uh, you know, my stepdad got me into music, really. My mom and him met doing, uh, like, actor-singers back in Nashua. He was the director of actor-singers at oh, the wow. time. So, uh, so they met, and then that kind of infused me with music, made me learn trombone at a young age. And that's yeah. why I love bass. So, because I went from trombone, I'm like, oh, I already know bass clef, so I could read it right away. So, what was trombone your first instrument? Trombone was my first instrument. Yeah, okay. yeah. I haven't touched one in you know twenty something years, so right. it would probably <laughs> sound horrible if I tried to touch it. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it was definitely the catalyst for everything. And then you know, that's what led me to bass because I'm like, oh, it's in the same clef, so I can read it right away. And that was right, basic. And then you know, my thought was, all my friends are learning how to play guitar. Why don't I learn how to play bass? And yeah. It has worked out well. You know? Yeah, 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 <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, that track too. So you were saying off air, uh, digital sunrise. You you call it? It's mid fi. Yeah, yeah. So that was the joke. It's it's not like a lo fi, like slow, like gritty track, but right. like it, it was. It's like a it's a hip hopified version of Fox and Flamingos, almost like yeah. yeah. So it's kind of the again a melding of the two uh, two sides. Right. Right. Um, when you play, like when you play out solo, do any of the songs from the bands that you're in make it into the set or do you? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, some of the, I actually just added one we've done with Fox and Flingos. We've done like this cool, funky version of Benny and the Jets forever. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that has like, it has a looping structure. I'm like, oh, I can loop this one way through. So like, that's kind of when I, I could, and then like, isn't she lovely? I do that. Uh, just the two of us. So yeah, some of the songs I do with one, one or other bands, and then some of my originals, like I do an emu, uh, when I do that live and I like layer the harmonies through the looper and like, yeah, it's, uh, uh, yeah, I definitely find songs from, from that for sure. Uh, I haven't quite done an original and I haven't. I've, I've thought about it. I don't think one would quite work, like looping process yeah. wise, because they're also weird. But yeah, uh, I definitely find some good covers that, that that work well. And that's kind of again the fun of my original or my live set is like people like listening and saying, "Oh, I know that song. Oh, that's a Radiohead. Oh, that's you know, um, yeah, Elton John." So like, there it is. It is kind of fun in that sense. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Well, we should. Uh, let's see. I want to make sure we get these other ones in. Um, should we play Melt Away next? Yeah, yeah. That's a new Fox and Flamingos song. Uh, that's actually our most recently recorded one. Oh, uh, okay. And this was a cool cool little story about this one. Uh, me and Maisie just were like, we want to write a song. We, we hadn't written a song in a while. Um, and then I had like, as, as silly as it sounds, I had a dream with this riff in it that I had already played. Like it just, I'm like, that's weird that I remembered that. And then she said, I'm like, okay, how about this? She's like, oh, I love it. So yeah. the beginning riff was where it all started. But I had the riff, the chord progression. And then I just brought it to her. She instantly came up with words and then brought it to the Flamingos and we fleshed it all out to what it is. And it's, it's an awesome song. Our only song that's not in 4-4 in the album. So uh, oh, no, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. A little, little waltz. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah, I love Fox and the Flamingos, as you know. I, uh, I love. I, I still love that. Uh, I still play it once in a while, that uh, Don't Be a Stranger. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, such a great, that's such a great song. Oh, it is, yeah, I love it. But this is great too. So this is brand new, right? Yeah, this is brand new. Uh, it hasn't been played anywhere besides us doing it live. You know, I think we debuted it at uh, Wormtown. So, uh, oh. yeah, this is an, a new little Fox and Flamingos uh, debut. Fantastic. And this is called Melt Away. Check this out.
so good. Gorgeous. Melt away. I love Fox and the Flamingos. I'm melting away. Right now. As, as you all know, yeah, that is fantastic. And and I yeah, the flute sounds great in that. The way it kind of just, it, it just weaves works. in and out, and yeah, yeah. and like it, it's cool. Like the flute over the heavy guitar, it's like yeah. such a cool like mix of sounds. Oh yeah, yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. If you're just joining us, uh, Gary Smith is here. He's in uh, Fox and the Flamingos and Jam Tomorrow and, uh, what, like 10 other bands or something? Yeah, Cosmic Blossom. Cosmic Plex, Blossom. Um, <laughs> collective, yeah, and then kind of Cinnamon Jazz Trio, the flautist in that. Uh, we, pl we play a little bit. Uh, we played at Pembroke, actually. With uh, I play bass in that with a piano player, Joe Verga, and she okay. plays uh, flute. Yeah. And, yeah, we just do some jazz standards. We have fun. We uh, it, It's just always a great time. I mean, just... Just like all my other things, like we invite people to play up. So like we had a trumpet player last time, uh, tenor sax player before. So it's it, it's fun. Is that is that ever challenging when you when you uh, I mean having having those additional horns? I mean, does it always just kind of work, or or is it ever? I mean, uh, jazz. It, even though it's kind of crazy, a lot of it's structured. So like yeah. you're you're kind of just doing the same form over and over. So as long as you know the basics for everything are kind of happening, it's pretty simple to add in uh okay add in. and even like uh in my jazz thing i do at pembroke uh like last week i do it on every other sunday pretty much uh, i had some younger kids a uh, freshman at berkeley come and i think he's a high school student from around here jack and uh nick and they came and we just sat in the whole time and played and went over some stuff and like it was like a it was a good learning experience for them to get to kind of woodshed those types of songs so yeah uh, i mean it's never Sometimes it's smoother than others, by all <laughs> means. It kind of depends on what the history is. But yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I, I do a few of them around here. I I, I often uh, go to the Forum Jazz Jam up uh, the old Area 23. Um, and yeah, same thing. It's just uh, some old school guys, you know, Brian Booth, Mikey G, uh, Mike Gallant. Uh, and they all just kind of go through some standards. And we all make it sound really, really good because, you know, there's there's the structure to it. But yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it it always depends. But, I mean, that's kind of the fun, especially if you have a solid bassist or in rhythm section, you know, a good bassist and drummer. Like, you can uh, you can over you can overcome a lot just by having the solid bass and then, you know, trust that they're going to kind of lead you yeah. <laughs> along. But, yeah, yeah it, it's definitely a different type of mindset versus, you know, rehearsing, you know, like learning a cover song for Jam Tomorrow. That's a very different mindset versus, you know, kind of, the improvisatory side yeah but even like cosmic blossom like sometimes in sets when we're doing something we'll just say hey let's jam in c minor and see where it goes and we've come up with songs like the most recent song we're working on came out in a jam we were doing a uh, candy road brewing we just like kind of saw where it went and then they made it we basically made it a song over the course of the night so yeah, it, it, yeah. It, it, it's fun how stuff can work like that uh collaboratively is Cosmic Blossom something where where the songs uh, like do they change a lot live like because it seems like with with a project like that you've got like the songs have room to breathe if you want to just kind of make them longer spontaneously exactly yeah I mean they definitely do and then I mean Cosmic Blossom Collective is it's a group of a bunch of people there's you know multiple drummers multiple basses multiple you know guitarists there's like kind of Nick and Brad or the core okay um, but yeah I mean there's three vocalists there's a saxophonist sometimes comes in so it's really uh it's really all over the place but yeah. that's kind of the beauty of it is that allows you for some flexibility you get a bunch of different types of input and like we practiced last week in Nashville, we had three female vocalists sarah meg and amanda like uh, meg from dog ate dog she's a great vocalist uh sarah's from dog ate dog too and amanda's from Cos cosmic blossom and uh um her uh, boyfriend have a group too i'll get in trouble for not remembering that, but, um but yeah so like it's just these powerful female vocalists and they can like instantly harmonize on the spot so while we're riffing on something that we made up they're coming up with these awesome intertwining harmonies and it's like it's just me and nick looked over at each other once last week just like jesus wow absolutely mind-blowing so, yeah but yeah i mean it's uh we but then like the one we did at Candia Road, that's just me, uh, one of the drummers, and Nick and Brad. Just we do a bunch of cosmic songs, the ones that, that don't require those powerful female vocals. Yeah. Uh, but then you know we'll we'll do some covers. We'll you know just make stuff up on the spot, and sometimes the spontaneous stuff gets like the best reaction from the crowd because yeah, you know it's just us doing our best thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Uh, so before we run out of time, 
and and we'll we'll play. Uh, we do have one more that you sent me. Uh, Kaleidoscope, I think it was. Yeah, Kaleidophone. Or, yeah, oh, that's oh, actually Kaleidophone. So. Yeah, that's the one with uh, Nick Burns actually of Cosmic Blossom. Oh, okay. Uh, he's the lead singer and the you know kind of core of that. Uh, he sang on the song. We actually wrote the song together. I had the guitar part, and then uh, he's like, "Yeah," let's, I said, "Let's let's make something cool together with this." And then he came up with the melody. Uh, he plays guitar on it. The same trumpet player who's on uh, Emu plays the trumpet parts. Uh, Brian Murphy, again, he used to be in a band called The Shills, which was uh, pretty famous at, at one point. Um, but yeah, uh, he's a he's an awesome trumpet player, awesome vocalist, awesome guitarist. So, okay, so, okay. Uh, yeah, so we'll uh, we'll play that in a moment. But uh, before we go, I want to make sure, uh, so for our uh, people listening live on Saturday, because you've got a busy Saturday, let's make yep. sure everyone wants to, people want to follow you around today. <laughs> yep, so at 12.30, I have a one o'clock the streaming starts but at 12 30 i'll be at pembroke city limits um showing the whole album we showed you know a few songs from it but there's 12 total songs um and then uh i'll be there till about 2 30 most likely and then i'll be going up to bayside bowl uh in uh portland maine um with onyx uh the old school hip-hop group uh they're playing and ben shore is opening for them we're gonna debut the song we just played uh, as i lay dying with me playing guitar excellent um right before they go on uh, and then tomorrow fox and flamingos is playing 11 30 uh in the middle of the milford oval for pumpkin fest too excellent um and then yeah yeah i mean keep an eye on my website website g smith uh music uh, dot com. I still have a lot of uh, a lot of gigs coming up. Um, you know, next week I'll be playing at Bad Burger. We do a cool little jam there with the owner uh, Ian, uh, and then I'll be up and I'm actually racing next weekend, so I'll be up in uh, Claremont. Uh, so I'm doing a gig while I'm racing on the weekend. So what do you mean you're you're racing? Are you you do I, I race uh, hill climb like hill climb cars. Oh no kidding! Yeah, so the <laughs> bottom of a mountain access road up to the top, like they do Mount Washington. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, there's a bunch of them throughout Vermont that uh, that I do in my. I have an old uh, 2004 Neon SRT4 that with a roll cage. That's uh, yeah, wow. yeah. That's uh, I've been doing that for a few years. I I think you saw me probably at one point when I was all broken uh, when I was in when I was hobbling. That was because I crashed oh, one of my race cars. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I love hill climbing. It's the best. It's no the kidding. Best, yeah. Is it scary? It sounds scary. Uh, yeah. I mean, like <laughs> it, it took me a while to get into it, but I'm like, if you're racing on a road course, which I did before, I'm like, if yeah. you hit a wall, it's not going to be fun. If you hit a tree, it's not going to be fun. And then, I mean, I did hit a tree really bad and it definitely was less than, less than fun, but <laughs> uh, I got back to it, to it within a year because it's so fun. The community is so great. And no it's, kidding. Just, it's wow. what every, everyone in New England wants to do. Go as fast as you can on a back road um you know with no no speed limits it's just you know a twisty windy 30 turn road up the top of the mountain, <laughs> mountain road so it's, it's it's a lot of fun wow wow <laughs> no kidding oh that's cool that's yeah. cool all right well we will uh we will close out with uh oh actually the other uh, thing too not only what you're doing today but let's make sure two people know the schedule for the album release Oh, yeah. Album release. Uh, yeah. So 14th, you'll be able to download it, stream it on Bandcamp. You can pre-order uh, the vinyls. Uh, you can order shirts uh, like uh, you got. We have those. I'm actually going to have guitar picks coming in again for my nerdy friends. And then uh, the 28th, the album will be out on all the other uh, streaming services. Obviously, Bandcamp is a little bit nicer to musicians. So anyone who would yep. like to support us through that uh, is, is definitely appreciated. But uh It'll be on all the uh, you know Spotify's and Apples of the world on the twenty eighth. Uh, yeah. Okay. And, uh, yeah, the vinyl should be here by the end of the year, pending things with with vinyl. But uh, it's going to be some cool like hundred eighty gram clear vinyl for the first uh, first hundred pressings. So, nice. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a vinyl nerd. I have yeah. been. I worked at Tweeter back in the day. So, oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. 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 So I, I'm a. I got to do, got to do it right. <laughs> I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 2022 was the first year that vinyl actually outsold, outsold CDs. CDs. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yep. Yeah. yep. Long time coming. <laughs> yeah. There you go. There you go. Gary Smith, always wonderful to have you here, my friend. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And, and congratulations on the album and, and everything that you're doing.